All right, in this video, I am going to go over our presentation, our proposal and presentation uh, process. Um, what is kind of cool about the way that we do things is I have combined um, our estimating and our proposal and our presentation all into one uh, worksheet PDF that works really, really well. Now, what I will say is that there are a lot of amazing um, estimating tools and softwares out there that by all means, uh, you know, if, if, they're, if they're up your alley and you like the way that they do things, by all means, uh, do it. Um, what I enjoy about using a PDF presentation worksheet uh, for our bid proposals is that it's very flexible. Um, I can reorganize and rework and tweak the process so that I'm selling as I am uh, giving the estimate and, you know, overcoming objections. I can rework things in ways that, um, you know, some softwares just don't provide the, the flexibility. And when I pair the PDF with my iPad and my uh, Apple Pencil, I can write it right on top of the PDF and make it interactive. Um, it doesn't feel too old school. In fact, it feels uh, rather new school and, and natural. And because I'm able to, you know, uh, create and design the, the PDF uh, proposal in any way that I want, it works perfectly with our systems. And so, uh, like I mentioned in this video, I'm going to go over how to, um, how to present uh, the price and the proposal, um, all while keeping it in one single appointment so that you're able to uh, close jobs on the spot. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and pull this up here and we'll talk about it. Okay. So the first page of this proposal is, uh, as you can see, it has a title, has our website. Um, it's got a, a picture and this is a, this is a real picture of, of a crew member. Um, and you know, we, we really, we really, as a company try to avoid, um, stock photography as, as much as possible. Um, we, you know, we really, really kind of avoid it um, whenever, whenever we can. We want to use our own real photos. So this first page is, is kind of like a, a cover letter in a lot of ways. Um, you know, there's a part for a place for us to write uh, our name, if, you know, whatever your name is, your phone number. Um, and I've seen reps put a little, you know, use a, a, a color, a nice bright color and write a little note here in this little blank space here. Um, but pretty basic, right? We just, the, the main thing is that we want it to be professional. We want the photography to be sharp and, and clear and just look, look really, really nice, right? Um, and then here on, uh, in the second page of the, of the deck, we've got some of our value propositions. And so we uh, try to simplify the process, um, letting them know that, you know, painting your house, it doesn't have to feel like a huge disruption to your life, right? And that our goal is to get a five-star review. And so what we do is we offer um, help on color design. Um, we keep them informed with bi-weekly check-ins up until their project start time. And we give daily text messages when the project is, is actually going on. Um, we follow the industry standards. Um, and every day we clean up at the end of every day and make sure that your house is back into a livable uh, condition. We get them exclusive discounts at Sherwin-Williams and we offer, um, we offer those flexible uh, payment options via our, our partners at Hearth, okay? And so just a little bit of information up front to let them know that this is going to be a different experience. This is what we're providing. This is what our promise is. And this is what we know is going to provide a five-star experience. If other companies aren't following these steps, if they're not including these things, then there's a reason why they're a lot cheaper than us because we, we deliver, okay? So then what I take them through is an inspection form. OK, and here I am asking clear and pointed questions that are going to help me to know uh, what 
is going to benefit their house the most. Um, I want to know how long they've been in, in the home. Um, this is going to give me a sense of, you know, how long do they want this paint to last, right? If they've been here a long time and, and, they've, uh, and they haven't painted in 14 years, then they are probably going to not paint for another 14 years. And so if that's the case, uh, that I had better uh, get them a product that's going to work really, really well. Um, I asked them, uh, are they planning on moving in the next five years, right? And if so, how soon? That also tells me a little bit about, um, you know, paint products and things that they should, they should be looking at. Um, you know, is it going to be the kind of deal where they want to just fix it up so that they can sell it soon and they're going to be looking to reduce the costs where they can, uh, find efficiencies, find cost savings, or are they going to live here, you know, forever? And do they want the high quality stuff, the stuff that's really made to last? Um, do they have any pets or uh, kids? Another, you know, important question here, because again, the durability, do they need it to withstand pressure and um, slobber and crayons and all kinds of things that um, could be causing them problems. Um, then I'm going to ask them, what areas are we looking at? Because a lot of times they're not going to do the whole house. They're going to only do part of the house. I ask them, what areas need the most improvement um, so that I know what is most important to them? A lot of times what you'll find is that people need to prioritize the project um, as they go. And sometimes the full scope of the work is just a little bit outside of the full scope. And so it would actually be better for them and easier for them if they were able to break it up into bite-sized chunks. And so what by asking what areas need the most improvement, I know that I can uh, upplay the things that they care about the most and downplay the ones that they don't in case I need to kind of adjust the price to fit in their budget. Then I asked uh, the question, you know, what are they... Uh, hoping to accomplish for, with their painting project. Um, you know, a variation of this is, um, what's your biggest fear of, you know, what could go wrong? Or, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll ask them, have you ever worked with other contractors before? And if they have, you know, they'll go, oh, oh, oh yeah, you know. And I'll say, okay, well, why don't you tell me some of the, what were some of the best things that contractors did that you appreciated? And what were some of the worst things that you did that you're hoping to avoid? And they will tell you, they will tell you exactly what they want and hope for in this project. And you will find themes throughout your career in selling paint services that basically highlight, yeah, uh, you know, they like communication, <laughs> they like cleanliness, they like people showing up when they say they do, you know, those kinds of things. Now, what I want to draw attention to down here at the very bottom is this, um, the inspection portion of the drywall and the millwork. And so what we have here is we have, um, oops. So what we have here is we have the degree of surface degradation, okay? DSD, that's what that stands for. Now this is, this is coming from the PCA industry standards. And there are uh, five different degrees of surface degradation ranging from zero to four. Um, zero where it is a sound surface. And so you're going to actually inspect the house, the surface, the drywall, the substrates. You're going to inspect the millwork, which is, you know, the baseboard and the trim and the doors and all that. You're going to inspect all of it. And if it is of a sound surface, meaning that there aren't any blemishes or deteriorations or, or any defects at all, you're going to mark it as, as a zero. And if it is a DSD one or slightly deteriorated surface, you know, there's a few nail holes, a few bumps and, and, uh, you know, blemishes and things like that. Uh, a few holes, you mark it as a one and you'll keep kind of going up the scale, two, three, four, um, four, of course, being the worst where there's, you know, a, a significant amount of substrate damage. You'll, ins you'll mark this so that they know, so the customer knows that you're actually inspecting their house, that, you, that they know that you are using your professional expertise 
to determine the degree to which you need to uh, prepare the surfaces to be painted. Now on the next page, you have more quality affirming uh, materials, more, uh, more positioning and framing and value propositions. Um, you know, we're striving for five-star reviews. We maintain an average five-star reviews. We follow the PCA industry standards. We are members of the PCA, which I often will tell them is the only painting contractors association in the country. And that we are few, uh, we are one of few companies in the area that are actually members. Um, this is again, that quality affirmation. Um, people want quality, they also want really great color, right? And so being able to offer color consultation, guidance on what is the right color, um, offering your expertise, you know, um, you know, my, my personal expertise and background is color in, in color is for one, I've been doing it for a really long time. Okay. More than a decade, uh, in professional color consulting and design. Um, I also graduated with a bachelor of fine arts from the Eskenazi, um, school of art, architecture and design. Okay. So I have that background in art that helps me to, that gave me the training in color. And then I'm also able to, uh, you know, translate that into the work that we're doing with, you know, with painting home and provide excellent color. Notice here that I used a picture in the background of, uh, uh, of a well, you know, designed house and, a, you know, a customer, past customer that we had with, with an eclectic taste and, um, you know, penchant for, for fun colors. Um, you know, that is a, that is a job that I, uh, assisted with on the, on the color consultation. You know, I helped her pick those colors. And so uh, you want to give people that confidence that you are an expert in your domain. And that, that domain expertise is really, really critical and important in, in sales. Uh, oftentimes we call it being the guide. We want to be the, the one that guides them through their decision-making process. Um, it's not a straight pitch. It's not a straight sell. We're just guiding them and helping them make the best possible decision. Okay. Next here, we want to uh, qualify our work, right? We want to show proof that we do great work. And so we put real pictures of the work that we did into the proposal, okay? We've got a house where we've done basically any, everything. We've got the, uh, the cabinets that have been done, the walls, the ceiling, the trim, everything's been done. We got a lovely review in the corner. And then one of the coolest parts about this, you know, because it's a PDF, we can put, we can embed links that go straight to the internet. If you're using an iPad, highly recommend, uh, you click that button, take a virtual tour of this house. And we, we had a Matterport photographer, um, our, 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 uh, good colleague and friend, Frank Schweiker, he, uh, went on this job site, this specific one where we've got these pictures and he did a 3d uh, virtual photography session. And the way that Matterport works is it stitches together the entire house so that you can go through in your web browser and you can view, uh, every part of the house and actually see the quality results. Okay. The thing about when you are selling jobs and you are trying to help people, um, you know, choose your company, uh, there are so many unknowns. There are things that they don't know about your company or the other company. And they are just trying really hard to figure out who they can trust. And so visual impact matters. Showing more than saying matters. Being able to show the portfolio that you have matters. If they like your portfolio, the, they are more likely to go with you over the competitors. Um, and, and I will actually in, you know, in those appointments, I'll click on this link, bring them to the virtual tour so that they can see the work that we've done. Uh, next, we're going to give them a little preview of what's to come. We're going to go over project wish lists, wish list, then I'm going to measure the full scope of their project. And then we're going to look at the project investment. And we always position it as an investment because that's what it is. All right. When people chase a deal, they get disappointed. And so it will hurt your customer to chase a deal 
rather than treat this like an investment like they should, which by the way, painting has a 107% return on investment. So they're going to get the money back in that they put in. And, uh, and so you have to emphasize that you have to call it an investment. All right. So with this project wish list, let's take a closer look at this. All right. First, we're going to talk about the ideal time frame. People always want to know when, how soon can you start? And again, going back to the value-based estimating, uh, how, when can you begin? How long is it going to take for you to start? That matters. That impacts price. And if they're willing to wait for our slower time period, then that means that we're going to be able to give them a better deal. But if they're if they have a sense of urgency and they've expressed how urgent it is, then they need to know that they're probably going to have to pay for that uh, extra urgency. Okay. I mean, we might say it delicately. We might say it, you know, Hey, you know, we're, we're really busy. We're in peak season. Okay. And so um, you might get a better deal if you were able to wait uh, for the winter, but I understand that this is a pressing uh, project for you and you want to get it done now. And so we'll, we'll do the best we can, right? But we've prepared them to know that it's going to uh, be a little bit more urgent. We're also going to ask them on a scale of one to five, how important is this goal, this ideal time frame? And, you know, because you're asking them what their ideal time frame is, their start month um, and, you know, hope for completion, you know, that that's really like, what's the latest this project could be done? Um, they're giving us a nice wide time frame, and the hope is that we can fit it in. You know, if we're booked out, uh, you know, months and months in advance, um, that's probably an indication that we're pricing things too low and our win rate is too high. And so, um, you know, as as we know, as when the price goes up, sales go down. Um, but uh, that might be an okay thing. You know, that might be a good thing because we're winning these jobs at a more profitable uh, margin. So we'll just ask them, um, what's your ideal time frame to, for this project to begin? And, um, you know, we want to, we want a month, not a like specific date. Um, but, you know, sometimes we'll give them, give you a date and they'll say, yeah, by, uh, you know, March uh, 27th. And so you might just say, okay, so we're thinking late March, early April, right? That's, that's how I would phrase that and get that confirmation and then ask. So in terms of when the project needs to be done, done by, what's the latest that you would feel comfortable stretching this project to? And they'll tell you, right? And if it's, if it's urgent and, they, and they're like March 27th, <laughs> then, then you might have to charge them a, a good chunk of money, right? But if they're more flexible, um, great, you know, and ask them on a scale of one to five how important this is to them. Then we talk about their ideal budget. Um, you know, I, ideally, we've gathered this information in the intake form uh, part of the job, um, but this is an opportunity for us to anchor um, the pricing. Okay, and so you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of after you've walked around the house and you've seen everything, um, you're gonna give them a, a, a budget. You know, basically, you're gonna just to kind of test the waters. You know, you might. And give it, give them something high, you know, say something like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I'm sure that you chose painting as a renovation because you, you know, you probably don't want another $50,000 renovation project. Um, but did you think that this project would be over $15,000 or under, right? You see how I've kind of thrown out this really high number, $50,000 renovation project. Um, and then, and then went with a, still a pretty high number, $15,000. Um, you know, uh, it, it all of a sudden that $15,000 doesn't seem crazy because I've anchored it by saying $50,000 first, but I've also with that anchoring price, that $15,000, um, I've also kind of anchored them still because realistically their project might not reach $15,000. It might only reach 10. And so what we're doing is we're using these, uh, these, the anchoring bias, which is a, which is a bias that, you know, humans are prone to, uh, to, to kind of using to 
figure out relative price, relative scale. And here's why it's important for us to, to use anchoring to our advantage, because your competitors will use anchoring to their advantage, okay? If you, have, if you go in and you have a, a customer who's going to give you, uh, who's going to go ahead and get three different estimates, well, they're going to get a high bid, they're going to get a low bid, and they're going to get a bid in the middle. And the bid, the low bid is going to be the one that anchors them down low. The high bid is going to be the one that anchors them high, and the middle bid is probably the one that they're going to go with, right? But if you're able to, you know, kind of win them over in the process of the sale, especially before they go out and get other estimates, right? If you can, if you can get them so enamored with our company, and so committed and connected with you as a as a uh, as their guide, then they're going to call those other people and say we've already got somebody, right? If you can give them more control in the pricing, so that you're creating a budget for them that fits within their budget, uh, you're going to have a better chance at beating the competition by basically having the customer tell them there's no need to come out. We already found our company. So, so use anchoring bias to your benefit because the, the debt, because the problem is that your competitors are going to anchor the price way down low. In fact, if they're, if your customer is even watching HGTV, HGTV is already anchoring them, uh, anchoring the price way down low because they're telling them that, you know, they can get their house painted for $500. And then, and the bad thing is they've got, you know, low price, uh, painters out there who are going to say, yeah, we can do it for $500. So do yourself a favor, be in control of this situation and anchor the price nice and high. Again, my favorite uh, way to do that is to say something like, um, you know, I, I imagine that you're, you're painting because you don't want another 500, you know, $50,000 project, right? Imagine cabinets, you're going in and it's a cabinet job and you say, um, you know, painting is a great alternative because I'm sure you don't want a, a $50,000 cabinet replacement job on your hands, you know? Painting can actually, you can actually get this work done for about a tenth of the cost. A tenth of $50,000 is already $5,000. And the average price of, of painting uh, cabinets across the, the country is usually within that three to $4,500 range. And, uh, you know, of course, there are big high end cabinets and there are also high end processes and finishes, processes and finishes that could cost ten twenty thousand $20,000 to paint the cabinets. Um, but, uh, depending on the process that we're doing, um, you know, it's, it's going to be more in that range. So that's not to say that we wouldn't offer that or have the capability of offering that at extreme high. Uh, but we just have to be realistic about the market. If we're, uh, painting in a market where they're just extremely affluent people, by all means, they're going to be willing to pay extra high prices. Um, if we're in a, a secondary market or tertiary market, where people just, uh, they, they, they want to get their honey oak cabinets, you know, painted and they you know, don't want a $50,000 uh, project. This is a perfectly fine way to anchor the price. Um, so going back to the budget here, we've anchored it and we want to know, um, are they going to pay now under our regular payment terms, which is 50% down now and 50% upon completion? Or would they rather spread the payments out and make installments? Um, you know, what's interesting about this question is that there are some people who have a strong aversion to, um, to financing and payment plans, whereas there are other people who, who really prefer um, to go that route. Uh, a number of years ago, I was you know, working with my team and we were trying to figure out whether we wanted to uh, provide financing to begin with, you know, whether we wanted to do it at all. And uh, we had some objections. We, you know, we had some people who wanted to be able to offer financing to our customers. We had some people who, um, you know, felt uh, kind of morally icky, icky about it, right? And so we had to have a conversation. Um, is it immoral to offer financing or no? Um, you know, we know that in, in the country, in, in America, that uh, consumer debt is, um, you know, is completely out of control. Um, that's, that's a given. There are certain gurus out there who preach, um, you know, being debt free and no debt. OK, I understand that. Um, you know, I, I hey, I, I live it as much as I possibly can. Um, but there are other people who 
who don't mind it, right? Uh, I think about the, um, you know, that quote that's always attributed to uh, Albert Einstein, where he says, uh, those who understand interest earn it, and those who don't understand it pay it, right? Um, there are options within our financing through our, our uh, partners at Hearth where they can qualify for 0% interest. And where I see customers wanting to go with the financing, and this is where I, I, I tend to offer, is when they are in that range of, I'm only planning to stay here for another year or two. If they're getting ready to sell their house, if they're only going to stay for a couple of years, and they are painting with the specific purpose of getting ready to put their house out on the market, this is where I highly recommend the financing, especially if they've got decent credit. Because, and here's why. Uh, if, especially if they're able to apply for, uh, qualify for 0% interest, by the time that that house gets out on the market and they sell it, they're going to be able to increase the value of their house by painting, get it sold faster and at a higher rate. And when that sale goes through, they'll be able to pay off the balance of their uh, of the loan. And there's no penalty for early payment. And so, um, you know, basically they will have gotten uh, their house painted for free. And and that is a that's a good deal. OK, because, again, the return on investment for painting interior painting is one hundred and seven percent. And so, uh, you know, what's more affordable than free. Right. And, and most of your competitors aren't going to be offering financing, right? And so for the, for the right people who, who are able to qualify for, uh, for the financing, I think it's a, a really great idea. Um, I, I have been advised that, you know, the word financing um, can be a little bit scary. And so we can use, um, you know, words like uh, promotion, um, you know, spread out payments, you know, that kind of thing, um, just to kind of ease them into that idea. Of, uh, of using our financing. Uh, we do want to offer the financing every single estimate that we, that we put out, okay? And so, you know, because we're transacting um, through uh, Hearth, um, they make it really easy to put a little, uh, you know, pre-qualification link and put your uh, payment terms, you know, what's the monthly payment, what, what the monthly payment would be. Um, they make it really easy to, to incorporate this into every bid. So you ask them, you know, are they going to, uh, are they going to pay now or are they going to make installments? Um, and then I like to ask them, you know, if it meant saving money, and I do this, especially when our prices are high, if it meant saving money, would you be willing to schedule this project during our slow season? And say book now, book uh, schedule later. If I'm in the slow season, then obviously we can just go book now because they're not going to, you know, save any extra money. Um, now, down here, we want to have a conversation about the quality of surface preparation and their overall ideal experience. And this is where I get a little, um, I try not to get too technical here. I try not to use any kind of jargon, okay? Um, but you, you will see some of the industry standard language uh, on this portion here, right? And this is manifest in the levels of surface preparation which you can check out, of course, on uh, Industry Standard P-14. So we've got level one, two, three, four, and five basic standards, superior, supreme, and restoration, okay? Most of the projects that we're going to be doing are going to be level three. It's the, it's the one that we most recommend because it provides a thorough filling, patching, and tape repair. And for the most part, we're going to be finding houses that have a degree of surface degradation between zero and two. And so the houses that we're doing, they're, they are not usually in disrepair. Um, the houses that we're doing, they're not usually brand new, okay? They're usually right there in the middle and they need a little bit of love, but the customers often are not super able to pay for the high-end, high-end pricing. Depends on your market. Some of you guys out there are going to be in markets where it is really high and uh, where, you know, people do want to pay, uh, you know, top of the line stuff. Some of you are in markets where that's just not the case. Okay. And so you have to know your market. 
And so I go through each of these levels. I say basic, you know, the basic level, what we're going to do is we're just going to clean the surface area make sure that it's, you know, prep for paint. And then we're going to apply paint. We're not worried about sanding or filling or anything like that. Um, we're just going to paint what we see. As long as, as long as there's not goop and grease on it, uh, you know, we're going to paint it. And then I tell them, I would not recommend the basic level for your house. You have some work to do in your house. Your walls need a little bit of love. And so maybe we look at level two or level three. I explain level two is a basic sanding and feeling, filling. Um, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to see some of the, the blemishes and, and things in the wall. And maybe we use a, a lower sheen paint to hide that. Um, but it's going to be more cost effective than taking it to the level of three and level four. And then I just keep going through each of these levels, you know, level three, like we said, when you get into tape repair and, you know, thorough filling and patching means superior. When you get into the, when you get the customers who are, you know, pretty picky, you might want to suggest level four. Okay. Um, level five restoration, unless you have, um, you know, qualified and certified uh, restoration painters on your team. Usually we're not going to be doing this. Um, usually we might recommend, especially if there's extreme damage to the substrate, we might recommend them working with a uh, drywall company. Let me talk, let me talk about level four for a second. That supreme finish. All right. When you're in with a customer, it's a really good idea when you're inspecting those walls to take them aside for a second and, and say, okay, let's look at this wall over here together. Will you please point out some of the things that, uh, you know, that, that you see that need to be fixed? Will you just kind of go through and, and just point that out, you know, and then just pause. Don't help them. Okay. I know that you see everything because you're in houses every day. Uh, I know that you see it all, but let's see what they see. Okay. Look at what they point out. And the answer will be telling. Because if they get up and cl up close and personal, and they can identify every little blemish, every little thing, if they can, you know, if they can see the size of a pinhole from across the room, then they're going to need level four, okay? And you got to push them towards that because they're just not going to be happy with with anything else, right? And you got to be explicit about it. But if they look at it and they're just like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess now that I'm looking at it, I see this. But honestly, I didn't notice that before. You know, we're not really expecting perfection. We just want we just want it to look, you know, halfway decent. Then you can kind of veer them towards level two or level three because they're not as picky. And in fact, what we'll show you is how to uh, how to use tiers to give them price options. And when you give them options, they feel like they're in control and they feel less like they are being sold to, sold to. Okay. Um, let's, let's take a quick peek here at the overall experience. So we've got um, communication, cleanliness, and punctuality. You're going to ask them on a scale of one to five. Now I got these three things um, basically from uh, scouring reviews. Um, what were, what were the things that people said about painters that, that they cared about? Uh, they cared about communication. They cared about the house being clean at the end of the day. Um, they cared about, you know, the painters, uh, you know, showing up on time or when they, when they said, when they say they will. So we basically just put this in, into our, our proposal. What's, what's most important for you, right? On a scale of one to five, how important is this? And, you know, honestly, it ranges, you know, some people say all fives, some people will, one will be a five and then they'll, you know, they don't want to seem too demanding. And so they'll, you know, one of the other two will be a three or a four. Um, it just kind of depends on the person. And the idea here is that you are going to communicate what they want to the crew so that if communication is important, they don't ever forget to send out that text message. If cleanliness is important, they don't ever forget to vacuum and clean up and fold the drop cloths at the end of the day, right? If punctuality is important, they are there on time every single day. And of course, I mean, you want them to be on time every single day, but you know, you get situations where let's say 
you got another job site that, you know, needs another hand. Is this customer going to be flexible and allow you to pop off and come back? Or are they going to be, you know, kind of the situation where, eh, uh, you know, we, we can't really get off this job. We gotta, we gotta finish this one and we gotta push that other folks, you know? Uh, so it's just about communicating. It's about understanding your customer and it's about, uh, tailoring the, the experience to them. So, um, so then you have your project wish list, all, all set. And then we're going to talk about paint products. Okay. Um, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're all Sherwin Williams, you know, we, we use Sherwin Williams. Part of that is because of, uh, the, the ability to have a national account and, um, the flexibility of payments. Um, you know, we can order materials online right from our phone. Um, you know, all you have to do is, is send a text message in to, uh, uh, to headquarters, to your, to your, um, you know, to your, uh, admin director and they'll get the, get the thing ordered. Um, if you've got the app on your phone, you can order yourself, right? Uh, so we make it, we make it, we try to make it simple by using the tail, the, the tools that are available and, and Sherwin, make, Sherwin Williams makes it really, uh, easily, uh, accessible. They also give us great deals and, you know, deals that we uh, benefit from, but also deals that our customers benefit from, benefit from. So let's uh, take a minute to go over some of those, uh, products that we, that we, that we like to sell. So the first one uh, on the top left corner here is the Emerald product. And this comes in Emerald, but there's also the Designer Emerald. Um, quick note on the Designer Emerald, if you are um, recommending colors that are particularly bold, vibrant, um, dark, a um, lot of magenta in them, uh, steer them towards the Designer series, okay? You're gonna get a little bit better coverage. Um, the regular line of Emerald, of course, is a top of the line product. It's, it's highly durable. It is washable. It looks good. Um, it is more expensive and they the discount that we pass on to them is not as high, but, um, if you are, you know, the way, so the way that we, you know, do our commission structure is that you're also earning commission on top of the gallons of paint that you, that you sell. And so you're, you're actually incentivized to recommend the Emerald from a commission standpoint. And, uh, and, and, and the reason we want to incentivize high, high quality products is because we want to satisfy customers and the better quality product you give them, the more satisfied they're going to be. Um, then we've got the duration, which is, uh, you know, highly durable, right? Um, I think in my opinion, the, the look and appearance of the Emerald is going to be better than the duration, but the duration is a fantastic product. Where I definitely recommend uh, duration over the lower tier products is in high mo moisture areas. The, the, the duration has a, a plastic polymer in it that is going to make it resistant to, you know, to, to mildew, and, uh, you know, all the damaging effects that come from humidity and moisture. It also has an antimicrobial agent in it. Um, you know, the Emerald does too, but the, the, the duration is where we start to see that. And in, an, in a post-COVID era, um, you know, this is a selling point, right? We, we want safe, healthy, clean environments. And, um, you know, there's an agent in this paint that kills those uh, virus infections upon contact with the wall. Uh, then goes into the two kind of bottom tier ones that we're offering. Now, what I'll say, when I say bottom tier, I say that that's relative, okay? Because there are worse paints still, but we're just not offering them. And we should let our customers know that, that we are not offering them low run-of-the-mill paints. We are offering them better products for their, uh, for their house, for their job. And so the cashmere and the super paint are two good products. Um, they're a standard paint. I typically recommend them to people who are moving or people who are not very hard on their house. Um, empty nesters, elderly, um, you know, people without kids. Uh, that's usually who I'm recommending the, the cashmere and the super paint to, or people who are just on a budget, right? We're going to offer our best discount on these two paints at 30% off. 
and um, you know they they do have their merits, right? Cashmere in particular is going to have a really nice looking finish. It's going to be smooth uh, in appearance, and it'll it'll look good. Um, whereas the super paint, you're going to get a little bit more durability than the cashmere, and um, and and it hides a little bit better, to be honest. And so uh, you just ask the customer, you know, what do you care more about? Do you care more about durability, the look, or both, right? And if they have those kids, you know, but they're still trying to save a little bit of money, maybe we go with the duration. But if they're really the type of people, they like high-end stuff, they like the best, they want to pay for the best, give them that option. Give them that, the, that emerald option, and, uh, and, and they're sure to be uh, satisfied. Do make sure that you check the uh, color and, um, and, and perhaps do a drawdown. Anytime that you have uh, yellows, um, magentas, uh, those, kind of, those kind of colors, a little difficult to get coverage. And so you're going to want to uh, talk to your rep, uh, your local rep about getting drawdowns to make sure that the coverage is going to be sufficient. Um, moving on from wall paint to the emerald urethane, um, this is for trim. It's your, your cabinet door in, in trim color. Now, the, the emerald urethane is, uh, it's a really, it's, a, it's an amazing product. Um, I think some of you, some of the, the, the like super high end cabinet refinishers, um, you know, those folks, they're going to be um, really particular about their, their paint products when it comes to cabinets. Um, you know, th these are the people that are, you know, exclusively using Malaysi or fine paints of Europe, you know, those kind of things. Absolutely phenomenal products. No question about it. Um, Again, it depends on your market. It depends on the availability of that paint. In some markets, you're just not going to be able to find that paint. And so we, you know, we want to be as universal as we can. So again, we go to, to Sherwin Williams to find, uh, to find the right product. Emerald urethane is a product that they recommend. It has a very high, uh, durable, um, high build or uh, uh, high hide formula. Um, Cover is going to be great. It's gonna it's gonna dry really hard and 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 last for a long time. It's easy to use. Um, can't say enough about this this paint. It's a really great product. Also recommend it on your doors, and your trim. Um, and uh, you know it comes at a higher price point. It gives you a, a really great um, you know commission if you're part of our system, obviously. And uh, can't recommend it enough. If people want to, if they're a little bit worried about that cost, um, there are some other products that you can recommend that are a little bit lower cost, like the Pro Classic, for example. I would not uh, put the Pro Classic on cabinets. I have in the past. It's fine. It's just not as good as the Emerald. I uh, really urge your customers to go with the, with the Emerald there. Um, but for trim, if they wanted to go with something like Pro Classic, that's fine. Uh, finally, you've got the Eminence, uh, which is a ceiling paint. Um, you know, some of these, the ceiling paint, I'm, I'm a little less, uh, you know, concerned about in terms of like, you know, is this the product that we use? Is, is it not? Um, you know, the, the, you know, paint products, paint lines change all the time. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if we saw a, a new, uh, paint product and we're needing to, you know, update this video or something, but Eminence is a really great product. Uh, the benefits, um, you know, you can use it straight onto new drywall if you want to. Um, it, uh, it covers well. You're still going to want to do two coats on it, um, but it's a nice flat finish. It's not going to have any glare. It's not going to show, you know, those blemishes. Um, it's, a, it's, just a, it's a good product, a solid workhorse of a paint. All right, so once you go through this part with your, with your customers, um, then you're going to go around and you're going to take the measurements. And so here we have a simple worksheet. Um, it is organized as such along the top. We have the uh, customer information. So we've got the address, the project title, the customer name, um, email, phone, the date. Um, you know, you could just do month and year. That's fine. And then in the uh, space uh, in the table below, here's where you break down the job. And so 
the, the way that we want to do this is, is kind of specific. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to actually back up here. I'm going to go to my chalkboard and I'm going to present on how to, how to do that. So what we have is we have the area, we have the scope, we have what's essentially a, a prompted notes section. Uh, we have the points, and then we have the price. Okay? The area, so when, you, when it comes to the area, the area is the, um, it is the room, right? It's the, it's the space that you're in. So um, it could be a bedroom, it could be a living room, it could be, uh, you know, a kitchen, you know, it's, it's whatever that is. So, you know, we'll just call it, the, we'll say a kitchen, right? And you'll write that in the first box, okay? And then the scope is going to be what you are painting, okay? So we might have walls, uh, let's say ceiling. Trim, you know, you can you can separate trim and doors and baseboard and you know all that if if need be. You can also just if it, if you're doing everything, call it trim. It's you're going to save space on the sheet, right? But if you're not doing the doors and windows, but you're just doing the baseboard, just write baseboard, right? Just be be specific there. Uh, and then yeah, maybe maybe you're doing cabinets, right? In this note section, things like color, sheen, um, you know, you can add, uh, you, you can add dimensions there, little notes about, um, you know, uh, repairs or things that included or things that are excluded. Um, by default, the, the cabinets are, or the closets are generally excluded, okay? If they're going to be included, right, include, you know, closets included, right, in, in the notes section. Um, and then you've got the points. And so let's just say that, for example, this kitchen is, a, is an eight point uh, you know, wall uh, that would make it a three point ceiling. Um, you've got the, uh, you know, let's give it a two for the baseboard. And then you've got a, a window and a door frame. So we'll call that a four. And then with cabinets, what you're gonna do is you're gonna count all the doors and drawers and multiply it by somewhere between two and three. It depends on, again, it depends on your market. It depends on the season, okay? If you are slow, air, sort, air towards the size of two. If you're busy, air towards the size of three. If you're right in the middle, two and a half is fine, right? And so let's just say we've got, um, you know, for simple math, let's say it's the middle of winter where, you know, we need to keep our people busy there are 30 doors, you multiply it by two, and that's going to give you 60 points, right? And so then you just take the number of points and you multiply it by your point value for each of the line items. And then you can create a subtotal under that for the room, or you can wait until the bottom and have the total for everything. I like doing the subtotal for the room, okay, because, you know, so what we have here, this is uh, 75, 75 points. Um, I like doing the subtotal for the room because when I go to present the price, it makes it easy for the customer to pick and choose, mix and match, and decide what rooms they want to prioritize this time around and what rooms they want to defer until later. Okay, and so this is kind of how I'm developing that price in this section. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop this, uh, this thing back up so that you can see. You have the area, the scope, the color and sheen, number of gallons, that kind of thing, points and price, and just list it all out like a shopping cart. And it's, uh, for me, it's pretty common when I'm, when I'm talking to, uh, you know, customers to tell them, hey, treat this like a shopping cart. Um, the things that you want to have in this bid, 
Um, let's make sure that we have them there. The things that you don't want in this bid, let's, you know, let's uh, postpone it. You know, we can, we can customize this bid to exactly how you want it and we can remove things and we can, we can take things, we can take things away. Right. And so uh, I also will tell them because, you know, if we do the whole house, there's a lot of information there and sometimes it's just too, too much for them to process. And so we got to make it a little bit easier for them. We got to break it down. And, you know, most professionals will tell you that if you're able to uh, put together packages, price packages in uh, bunches of three, that that becomes really uh, digestible for the customer and a really great way to sell. And so um, let's take a look at this uh, in our next slide here. And uh, this is, yeah, this is, this is where it kind of gets cool. So after you have, um, you know, tallied up all of the, the work that's being done um, and you tally up, you know, how much paint that you need, um, by the way, uh, you know, tallying the paint is, is pretty simple. Um, there are calculators online. Sherman Williams has a calculator online. Uh, we have a conversion for the points. And so basically with the, um, you know, with the wall points, um, you, tell, you total up all the wall points and you divide it by six for two coats or 12 for one coat. Um, same for ceilings, just divide it by six. Um, if, it, if you're doing trim, uh, you know, there's, uh, you can use the number 27, um, but there's a conversion for each, you know, thing. So we've actually, um, in, in our, uh, you know, when you become a member, a full member of, of the team, we actually give you these uh, daily planners that has a step-by-step um, a, a -step guide to, you know, all of the, all of the whole point system and the breakdown on paint. And so it, you know, it, it will tell you, you know, for doors, yeah, the divisor is 10 and for windows, the divisor is 30 and for millwork, the, the divisor is 40. Um, if you're, if you're in a pinch and you need to, you know, figure it out, like I said, 27 is the average of those and it makes it pretty simple to, to bid it out. Um, so you basically bid out, you know, what your materials, um, how, how many gallons are going to be and what I urge you to do is to provide a range okay and the reason why i suggest a range on your uh, paint numbers of quality is because depending on who's painting depending on which roller naps they're using depending on how porous the substrate is depending on what um you know sheen that they're using and what sheen it's going on top of uh, that can make, you know, you're not going to get a, you're just not going to get an accurate number. And so what we do is we, we provide a range that's usually, you know, a, a margin of, you know, two to four gallons on either side of, of what, what it is. So if I think it's going to be 10 gallons, then I'm going to say, you know, eight to 12 gallons, right? I'm going to provide that range. And so then what we'll do from there is we'll calculate a, uh, paint credit and we will purchase against the credit and that kind of saves our butts. So if we need more paint, the customer knows that we're going to come to them and say, Hey, we need more paint. And if we didn't use all of the paint, uh, in the paint credit, we will refund them the, the difference. So let's take a, a closer look at the packages. They're labeled essential deluxe and premium. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to do a short description of the scope of work of what is included. And, um, you know, that might include everything. It might not include everything, um, but just do a, a, a short description there. Um, you're going to choose the paint option. What products are they going to get? Are they going to go with the emerald, the duration, or the, you know, the cashmere? Then, then you're going to apply the paint credit amount. For the paint credit amount, uh, what I do here is I will... Um, take the paint option that they choose. So let's, you know, say, for example, they chose duration, which was about $69.99, um, you know, add a couple bucks for uh, tax, multiply it by however many gallons, right? Let's say it's 10 gallons. So we're probably about $730 for, um, you know, for the duration if, they're, if they, they need 10 gallons of duration. But you also need um, supplies like, 
sundries, uh, co roller covers, tape, plastic, um, you know, any kind of consumable that's used to produce, you need that. That is usually ranging around 6% of your, of the lowest um, tier price. Okay. So you, you, you give a base price, you multiply that by 6%. Um, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be your number. Say that the, let's say the work was you know, $10,000. And, uh, you know, 6% of, of 10,000 is uh, uh, $600. And so, you know, you're going to add that 600 to the uh, paint option that you had, which, you know, in, in the previous example, I know these numbers are, these numbers are just made up, but we're just going to add, uh, you know, 600 to 730. And so you've got $1,330 as your paint credit amount. Feel free to, to round that up or down. It, it doesn't matter that much, honestly. Uh, because it's it is a credit. They're they're purchasing a uh, a credit that we are going to use as a basis for funding their their uh, their job with materials. Right? If they need to buy more, if we need to buy more paint, then the customer is responsible for buying more paint. If we don't use the entirety of the paint credit, then let's have some, you know, freaking honesty and integrity uh, in business ethics, and we'll refund them the, the, the difference, right? And so put that number, you know, close, make it close, doesn't have to be perfect or, or, or accurate. Explain to the customer, this is a paint credit. It's approximate, okay? We're going to purchase more, we're going to purchase less, but it's going to be around this point. Uh, then we write down the prep level that they chose, you know, ranging from one to five. We're going to write down the labor amount, which is going to be the combination of all the jobs that they choose, all the projects that they choose, chose the rooms in their scope. Uh, tally that up, add it up, put it there in the, in the labor amount, add your paint credit and your labor amount together. That gives you the total investment. And then um, assuming you've downloaded the Hearth app, you can go in, they have a, calcula a, a payments calculator to help you figure out what that payment, monthly payment plan will be, put it there just so that they can see that, you know, and, and the average job, I've seen, I've seen monthly payments range from $46 a month to like $350 a month, okay? It just depends on the size of the job. Um, they, you know, people, Hearth, uh, the, the, the financiers at uh, Hearth, um, they, they can finance as low as a thousand dollars, but if it's a project less than a thousand dollars, that's probably where you're going to say, well, you know, we're not going to finance something less than a thousand dollars. Um, so on these three levels, what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to try to arrange it in some way where you have kind of this good, better, best in terms of pricing. The premium section is all about anchoring the middle two price options, okay? You want the premium to actually be premium, right? Uh, prep level four, this is what that looks like. The paint product, we're using emerald uh, designer on everything, you know, like just make it, make it high end. We're doing the full scope. All the work is is combined in the premium. We're getting all the pro, all the work that you asked me to bid, all of the the nice products that we're using, the highest end prep, and thus the highest price. Okay, this will anchor it so that they are looking at two other prices. Now, there's some, there's a little bit of, um, you know. A little bit of skill work here, a little bit of of, uh, of salesmanship in here. That's not not dishonest by any means, um, but it's it's just kind of giving us an edge, right? If the customer is custom accustomed to getting multiple bids, three bids, well, we're giving them three bids right here, three different bids right here. How many times have you gone into a bid where somebody was lower, and it was only because they weren't promising to do as many rooms as you were? And because they looked lower, but they weren't necessarily doing the full thing, they get the job. All right. We want to avoid that. We want to, we want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. And so, again, use anchoring to your advantage. Anchor the price with the premium product, the premium uh, 
you know, the high, the superior level of prep and, uh, you know, and, and, and give them, give them a strong price there. Uh, the thing is, is that often people want that, you know, they, they, a lot of people don't want the cheap, you know, stuff. They don't want to cheap out on things. They've been down that road. They've had problems with, uh, you know, they've had problems with other contractors who, um, you know, just didn't charge what they needed to charge and it, and it bit them, it bit everybody in the butt. Okay. There are people out there who want the premium product. Uh, there are other people who, uh, you know, they see the premium and they're like, well, we, you know, this isn't the Taj Mahal. Uh, let's, you know, let's downgrade a little bit. And so um, they look at the, okay, great. Um, you know, this will give me the, uh, you know, a, a decent quality paint. It'll give me the number three prep level and a price that I can afford. And then when they compare it to the essentials, they might think, it's not that much more expensive, right? Maybe in the essentials, you went with prep level two and you went with super paint. And if they see that the difference between the essentials and the deluxe isn't that big, but the jump from deluxe to premium is big, then they might say, let's go with the, let's go with the deluxe, you know? And you can play with that, right? You might, you might do it so that the essentials, maybe you've actually played around with the scope and you've said, okay, well, if we were just to paint your cabinets, you know, the essentials, this is what it looks like. But if you wanted to do the cabinets and the, you know, the, the, and paint the interior of your home, um, this is what it looks like for the deluxe. And this is what painting the interior of your home looks like on the premium. And they might say, okay, uh, yeah, we just want to do the cabinets. We're not ready to invest in everything yet. Um, or they, maybe they do want to, uh, you know, go the full, go the full distance and invest in, in it all. Uh, whatever you do here, you know, it's, it's fine. Okay. Just give them the options. That's the, that's the key. Make a recommendation because again, you want to maintain your position as a guide, put a star next to the option that you want. So there's that little circle up there. Just put a star next to, you know, essentials, deluxe or premium, whatever one you think is, is best for them. And then have them mark with your print, you know, hand them the pen, the pencil, uh, and have them choose which option they want, and then have them sign to lock in that price, okay? What you'll notice in the fine print there is that they um, are uh, locking this in um, from the price, but that their signature does not uh, bind them to this proposal until after the, the down payment is made. On the uh, last page here, uh, we have just a, you know, kind of a final, um, you know, kind of a final sales pitch. Um, you know, this, it's a sales letter. It follows our brand script. Um, in the right-hand corner, it says secure your spot right in their ideal time frame, provided that you're able to do it or your soonest available spot and give them a date to accept by, you know, uh, you could put it, you know, it, it, this really doesn't matter. You know, it's just, it just creates a sense of urgency. You can, you know, put it out for three days, the end of the week, two weeks. You could do it for the end of the year. Um, just note that anything longer than a year is probably problematic because, you know, every year inflation goes up. And so we do have to adjust the, our base prices. Um, and if you've given them a deal, if you've given them like a specific deal, a winter deal, for example, um, definitely make sure that it expires before your, uh, your summer, uh, pricing goes up. Um, we have, you know, our proof of insurance, uh, right there and a couple of references that they can call. So all in all, uh, you know, a pretty solid, uh, tool for, for estimating. Um, when, when I go through this with a customer, the first thing that I do is I go through, and I do a tour of the house with them. And then I um, do the inspection. I ask them their wish list. I uh, go over paint products. And then I say, okay, next I'm going to go and take some measurements, come up with a price. We're going to sit back here. We're going to talk about it. Then I go back to the beginning of the proposal and I go through every single page with them. And, and then we, and then we come up with that, uh, you know, that final price together. 
um, when you get enough practice on doing bids on the spot, you'll be able to um, have that conversation right there with them. Um, and what I strongly recommend is having the patience to be able to sit there and talk price with them. Be willing to rearrange things, cross things out. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll, um, actually I do this, I, it's kind of a habit. What I'll do is I'll say, okay, here's the, here's the shopping cart. Here's the packages. I'm going to let you two look over that and I'm going to go grab my color deck and, and we can look at a color. I'm going to give you a free uh, color consultation day. Just one color. I have time for, to choose one color. If you want more, then we can set up another appointment. But we're going to choose that first color today. And, um, and, then, and then I'll be back after you guys have had time to chat. I'll go out there. I'll uh, make a phone call. I'll, you know, do something. Give them enough time to kind of talk about it. Okay. So then when I come back, they will have said, okay, we want to do this, this, and this. And I think this is the package that we want to go with. And I say, phenomenal, let's look at color, right? And, and I didn't even, you know, I didn't get too excited about it. I didn't, you know, uh, over oversell it, you know, I wasn't thirsty. I just said, great, we'll do that. And then we'll look at color. And then from there, I would um, send that proposal out, um, send them the invoice to make that down payment. And, and, then, and then we make a sale, right? It works pretty well. It works, it works really well, actually. Um, if you are still unsure about doing the proposal on the spot, okay, it does take a little practice. And sometimes when you see things, you might want other people to give you their opinion on certain things, especially if there's like, you know, a repair and you're like, now nah, I need a second eye on this. I need the team to need the team to look at this. What you might do is you'll say, okay, I've got my numbers. And what I would like to do is I'd like to set up a return appointment to come talk about this. You can do this virtually or you can do it in the home. Okay. I like virtual because I can share my screen, right. And I can, I can walk them through it uh, pretty easily. It's also a little more convenient for everybody saves on gas. Right. Uh, but at any rate, you say, okay, I've got my numbers and I'm going to go work them up. And I would like to set up a time to, to go over the proposal with you and then get the schedule, get them on the schedule. Okay. Hand them your phone, pull up your booking site, hand them your phone, find a time on your schedule to, to do it. Okay. Um, you know, or just say, Hey, can we do it? I've got next Tuesday open at you know, noon. Can we do, can we do that time? And then punch in the numbers, set the calendar appointment, you know, go for it. Ask them, would you prefer in person or can we do it over a, a virtual meeting link? Set it up, go over the proposal with them. You will impress them with this. Okay. They will look at this like th it is a masterful way of selling. It is a masterful piece of art that you just presented. They will love it. And then you will send them the copy of the proposal so that they have it in their possession. And, uh, and then you'll start your follow-up process. Right. And so, uh, you know, that's pretty easy. You'll, you know, send the lead to our system. Our system will start automating um, some of that follow-up for you. Um, you'll give them a call, shoot them a text message, see how they're doing on it, and then close the job. Send out that invoice uh, and contract via Hearth, close the job, put it in our backlog, okay? It's a simple, simple, definitely a simple way to do things. Um, is Does it take a lot of time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes a little more time. It's a little bit more involved than just going and, you know, taking measurements and then going home and writing something up. It's a little bit more involved. But if you commit to the process and you just follow those steps, you follow the, the, the proposal presentation, the worksheet, you go through it, you follow the steps, you're going to increase your closing rate um, leaps and folds, and you're going to uh, increase the, uh, the, the price tag that you put on those things. And, you know, the, the last note on why it's important to provide a, a decent price, um, because it just gives our crew more time to do better work. And the better served the customer is, the happier they'll be. When you put a low price on something, uh, you know, do what we can. We just, we can't make the numbers work. 
Um, we can't we can't fit a poor quality. Uh, we can't fit a high quality job into a, a low price. Okay, so be confident. Be sure people want your work. They want what you're doing, and deliver this proposal with with confidence. And as always, remain the guy.